right, Teresa, it's good seeing you again. <laughs> well, it's great to see you. Glad you're able to stop by. Thank you for having me. Sure, sure. Now, we did a segment on the interactive show last week about large families, and you're from a pretty big family, mm -hmm. the middle of seven kids. Right. What was it like growing up in a big family? A lot of fun, mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of craziness. Um, yeah. Teaches you a lot of patience, I think. I bet. <laughs> what number are you? I'm the middle, so I've okay. got three older and three younger, yeah. and so it was always interesting. I think it's a good spot to be, though, mm -hmm. um, when your parents have kind of learned through the older ones, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and they do well through the middle, so yeah. it, was, it was fun. But I'm close with my siblings, and we always had a crazy Crazy time, a lot of stories. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Um, and you were homeschooled through 11th grade? Right, or right. So, mm -hmm. what was that like? I mean, going from homeschool to public school in those really critical junior and senior years. It it wasn't really a challenge other than waking up early. Mm -hmm. I had never woken up every morning, you know, five or six, and so that was something yeah. to get used to. <laughs> Honestly, there wasn't really too much else that was different. I mean, mm -hmm. it's still school; it's still learning either way. It's just an education, but um, it was it was certainly a different environment. Mm -hmm. But of course, the actual school itself is the same. So as long as you just focus on that right. and ignore those other things that can cause problems in high school. It becomes mm -hmm. a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, it was definitely an, an interesting learning experience and I learned quite a bit, but I'm very glad I had that experience and, mm -hmm. and kind of had a taste of both because I think that really helped in the long run. Definitely. Helping me understand different kinds of people and mm -hmm. all sorts of situations. Mm -hmm. Very good, yeah. Now, you are an excellent pianist as we saw at the pageant. We were there watching you, Thank Terry you. and I. But you have a talent that I was a little disappointed that you didn't display on stage, and it's your duct tape dresses. <laughs> uh, How original would that have been if you just got on stage for like two and a half minutes and made a beautiful gown out of duct tape? Because you do that. See, that would certainly be a talent if I could do it in 90 seconds, <laughs> That's though. That's true. So it takes, it takes quite a bit longer than that. But, yes. but I, I know I mean, it was kind of debate, actually, to see whether <laughs> I would wear it for, for any part of the competition. But we opted out of that one. Yeah. I thought I, The dresses I found, I thought, were a little nicer than my creation. You looked beautiful so. in your gown. Well, thank you. That looked really great on you. You were 17 when you competed. I was 18 when I competed, mm -hmm. and as, you know, the younger group of contestants, right. I remember feeling a little bit intimidated because we had like 24-year-olds in law school and med school, and I was right. still an undergrad. How, how did that feel for you? I mean, you hadn't, you haven't started college yet. Right. Was there any type of intimidation? I mean, you're, you're very mature and you definitely held your own, but how did it feel just those weeks of rehearsals? Well, honestly, I don't know how it was in years past, but this year I really felt that the whole group of girls were extremely supportive mm -hmm. and encouraging of each other, and that helped a lot, mm -hmm. because even though I was in the younger group, we, we were like little sisters to some of the older ones, but it was in an encouraging way, yeah, not a looking good. down upon us way. Mm -hmm. And so that really helped a lot, because I felt like I was learning from them, mm -hmm. and not being intimidated by them, but just being lifted up and encouraged during the week. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with, with an age discrepancy, you have to make up for it with experience intelligence or maturity mm -hmm. and so I really have worked hard to do that in the past couple of years and so I felt that coming into the competition all of those ladies are at the same level we're mm -hmm. all on an even playing field and it's just whoever works the hardest right. from there yeah. and so um, I really didn't feel intimidation there but I didn't expect to win either because of that fact because oh. honestly I thought it was something that the judges would be concerned about mm -hmm. and so you never know mm -hmm. but it was it was neat to see that they actually looked at it the opposite way mm -hmm. and that it's really been an encouraging thing to see that the younger generation right. and teenagers can succeed in these things yes Yes, absolutely. And and speaking of teenagers, a lot of people believe that 17 is the youngest Miss America we've ever had. But I remember um, the one winner that we had from the state of Connecticut <laughs> was 15 when she won. So in right. years past, yes. winners were very, I think she was like a sophomore in high school. Right. When the competition first started, there were a couple 15 and 16 mm -hmm. year olds. And then they changed the age requirement mm -hmm. to 17 to 24. Since that point in 1937, no 17 year old had won. Right. Because it's kind of hard to be 17 and graduated from high school and still qualify for your local and your state. Definitely. So the timing worked out perfectly with me. It, it was about two weeks there that I had to compete. But um, it, it worked out, but no other 17-year-old has won since 1937. Although, wow. in the beginning of the competition, there were very, very young girls. Yes. Well, you're a beautiful and mature representative, so we're really glad to have you as our Miss America this year. Thank you so much. Thank you.